Welcome everyone to the Hot Docs Lunch and Learn webinar. My name is Nigel Richards and I'm a senior product manager here at Hot Docs and I'm here to introduce Terry Ponsford who's going to be leading us through today's webinar. Terry Ponsford has a very long history with document automation and she's going to share some of the lessons learned she's, she's learned over the years. Terry Ponsford, currently at KWM, has recently been involved with a large uh, hot docs deployment, and but she's worked in other places as well. So for those of you, um, before I go any further, um, when we go through this uh, webinar, there's an opportunity to post questions. Uh, the GoToWebinar um, window there has a place for you to enter questions. Please do feel free to type questions in there. The, towards the end of the webinar, we'll have a chance for, to go through some of those questions and Terry can, can answer them for you. So, um, for those of you who are perhaps not familiar with Hot Docs, I'd like, just like to spend a few minutes just discussing what Hot Docs does and how it helps to address the business challenges as far as documentation goes that many of us face. Hot Docs is a tool, it's the, the first and the world's leading tool for what we call document automation. Now, document automation with Hot Docs allows you to take your, your core documents, your precedents if you like, and mark them up with business rules. We can start off with Word documents or PDF documents. Hot Docs provides a tool that allows you to mark up placeholders for customers' names, amounts, details of the contract, or conditional clauses, or build tables dynamically, or signature blocks. So the template author creates these templates and publishes them for use by their users. Users interact with the Hot Docs content by filling in fields in a very dynamic and intuitive interview. An interview is typically uh, rendered in a web browser. Uh, questions which are defined by the template author lead the user through a very intuitive you know, entering customer names and deal details and so on. And at the end of that process, Hot Docs combines the data that's been gathered from the end user with the rules in the template to produce highly sophisticated, highly tailored, customer-specific contract documentation. In addition to that, HotDocs produces answer data so that if you want to carry it any further or reproduce or reassemble those documents just by changing a few fields, you can do that. So if you're interested in having a, a, there's more information about HotDocs, uh, contact us and, and we'll arrange a demonstration. So I'm going to hand over now, like I said, to Terry Ponsford, who's going to share with us a wealth of her experiences and the lessons learned over the years. So over to you, Terry. Thank you, Nigel, and thanks very much for the introduction and showing us the power of hot dogs. It truly is um, a great piece of software to be working with and to be able to produce documents quickly and efficiently efficiently in the workplace. And interestingly, my colleagues of um, hot docs developers or document automation developers, you'll find that we're all very different and we all have our different strengths. So I'd like to uh, share with you what I bring to uh, the automation and the documents I work with. So. Uh, those fellow developers I talked about, they're, they're most probably laughing at this slide now, the child in the box, because sometimes when you're working with automation of um, suites of documents or just single documents, you can feel in a little confined space. But just like that child, if you think outside the box and use your imagination, there'll soon be giggles of delight when you've achieved producing something that saves you time and or money or both. So just to tell you a little bit first ab about my background, <clears throat> as uh, Nigel said, I've been working in document automation as a second career for quite a long time now. And I first joined uh, William Mercer Fraser um, in response to their request about uh, a WordPerfect macro writer. and. Interestingly, when I was putting this uh, slide together and thinking back over my uh, career, I realized that all I've done is join and change and change software 
and that software could be either um, the automation software or the word processor. Uh, William Mercer Fraser were replacing their mainframe system and they had an in-house uh, program producing their specimen trust deed and rules for final pensionable salary scheme. And they were replacing it with an extended local area network, so PCs, and so that lots of things were changing at once. Uh, the word processor was the same, but you know, moving from a mainframe to PCs and how you're going to handle that was quite a challenge. And that's why I say it's not just about hot docs and automating documents. It's also thinking about the program, how it's going to sit, where it's going to sit, who's using it, how are they using it. So that's all been very, very interesting. Uh, I moved back into the city uh, to join Lovell White Durrington around about 1994. And again, they were changing. Wang was going out, and um, a network system was being put in. Uh, still in the days, oh no, it's just on the, the cusp of Windows coming into being, um, but WordPerfect was still their software, um, the web, web, web processor. Hot product, so was outside um, a law firm, delivering to the customers, and that's where just using sort of hot docs as the true source of my automation. Um, I learned an awful lot. And returning to Lovell White Durrant uh, at the end of last century, because they again were changing from WordPerfect to Word, and they were also growing. There was rebranding. Um, there was just an awful lot happening just on the cusp of that century. And then joining King of Wood Madison, uh, when I first joined in 2005, they had a different product for their automation, that was Ghostville. And when Ghostville was no longer supported, that's when uh, Hot Docs came back into the firm. But also in the last couple of years, we've had a lot of rebranding again in, um, in the last um, two and a half years, rebranding twice has been quite a, a, a task to undertake. So this is where having set things up in automation, I've been able to make my life as an automator easier because I've been able to foresee what's going to likely to happen and not have to um, work quite so hard in bringing things along the road, especially where rebranding is um, concerned. So life before hot dogs, that was one question that's been um, given to me, and it, my, my first response is, well, do you mean life before Hot Docs Now, which was Ghostville, a desktop um, product, a product we used as desktop, or actually, I'm talking before 1990, and my life before then was wood typewriters with standalone PCs, I mean, I still use my shorthand to this day. And but the, the lessons that I learned working for private and public banking, um, for um, the Royal, um, Royal Air Force, British Army of the Rhine, and in um, an Elizabethan historic house open to the public, all the sorts of tasks and jobs that I've undertaken, and together, together with my professional pride um, in presenting good quality type documents, have all come into the skill I now employ in automating documents. I want to make sure that anything that I present is as good as if I had typed it from scratch. And that's my benchmark. Because when all those processes, when we didn't have a computer, yes, life was a little bit slower. But we had to still work fast and efficiently because time is money. And back in 70, 1978, when I first left and started left education and started work in uh, the West End of London, I was told that typing an A4 letter would cost about fifteen pounds because taking into account the um, salary and the rent and the property and, and everything else. And if you look at one of the online calculators, 
that now tells me that that single A4 piece of paper costs 84 pounds and 24 pence today to do the same task. So we've got to make computers work for us and not be a slave for them. So what are the business challenges that we face today? We're working very fast. The world works so fast. We've got information coming in. That time before that I spoke about, at least you know, instruct instructions came in by letter. Phone was an immediate thing. Facsimile machines, they were actually called facsimile machines, not faxes, you know, were an emerging technology. So with the pressures of us, we've got to work efficiently and effectively. And I will always talk about the life cycle of the document. I've got to look at how the document was created in the first place, what underpin it, what, what um, structures underpin it, what does it need to do? What work needs to happen during its life cycle? And if it's a contract document, how much editing happens? Does it travel to another party and come back? You know, does it, is there a lot of um, consultation with the client? There might be a very long gap between the initial creation and the final signing off. So I want to make sure from an automation perspective that whatever I automate, brings me back to exactly that same cycle. I also want to make sure that I'm making use of any um, information that's already in, in knowledge of the, of the system of the firm. I don't want to have to retype things twice. I hate you know, that. I don't see that being productive, and that's where errors can creep in. So I don't want to reinvent the wheel. And I do want to work in-house. Here we have um, tickets template management system to create our word templates. So I want to make sure that the functionality they have is also available. So I'm not, not going to do the same work that that developer has done to, to um, connect things together. I'll just ask people to work slightly different to make use of that. So one of the difficult things, I've uh, I've literally finished the project to migrate all our applications from Ghostbill into Hotbox Server. And, and it's a quite a nice opportunity to be able to look and see what we've done, but also what needs to happen. So working with the Hotbox team, we developed um, uh, a, a system whereby we're using Hotbox Server. Any document that's created is automatically saved to the Worksite Matter workspace, so it's saving into the document management system and saving people money, uh, money, saving them money, but saving them time and effort and the tedium of having to oh type the same thing time and time again and then make may make a mistake. And it's also important for me to look at what happens to that document after it's been created and and you know, what, what needs to make it as if I had typed it. So if we have um, a table that contains entries that may need to be sorted alphabetically, I want to make sure that I have a macro that can do that if necessary and direct it. So the team at Hot Docs have been really, really good and helped me bring that sort of vision to reality and to make life here for every, you know, life here easier for everyone. So I've learned a few lessons along the way, as I say, being able to look back, to be able to think about what we, we produced and what it still needed to do. And it's been you know, a good time and certainly migrating applications make me realize how, how inventive me and my um, predecessors had been in developing applications. But it's also the fact that introducing new systems, new architecture, made it not just about hot docs and me, it's a team effort, the server teams, the network teams, the, the service and help desk teams, they all play their part in supporting the people in the firm to use our applications happily, safely, and with confidence. 
one of the things as a developer that I will stress is that planning is so important. You need, a, um, you need to make your own roadmap in how you're going to develop the application. And you also need to be able to say, freeze the design, so that um, often when, pe when you start to show people what you've developed, they say, oh, and can it do this, and can it do that? And soon you find, if you respond to every new suggestion, you find that your application doesn't get delivered, doesn't get used, because it's constantly in development. So when planning, go for phases, so that if somebody does come up with a, an idea that you want to implement, then go, yes, we'll add it to the next phase, we'll add it to the following phase, so that you can keep control, but also that the business can benefit from what you've done. It doesn't have to be um, a one-armed bandit winning the jackpot approach. You can just do very subtle changes, change the way that people work, change the way that they access um, the application, and they will soon grow and gather momentum and reap the benefits of anything that you can subsequently introduce. It's also important that um, you keep beating the drum, you keep letting the, the business know that these applications are here. Because especially working with lawyers, they move through post-qualification um, cycles and so they'll move their focus of their work. So something that they were working on soon after qualifying, they most probably won't use again after two or three years. So you've got new people constantly, a constant change. So you're constantly, constantly, six, every six months at least, reminding people that these applications are here, this is how they can help you, this is how they can give you more time to focus on the issues for the client that take more time, thought, consultation. And it's very important to me that I support people in the way that they work. I don't want to give them something that they feel that isn't natural, because as soon as they've got something that is forced on them, they won't use it, and all that effort has gone to waste. They, it's, Automation has got to fit in to help them in their task and not um, say, oh, we've, we've asked you every question regarding about this document because a lot of questions won't be answered and they'll, they'll just avoid using the system completely. So just to sum up then, it is a small challenge. But what you, you, you can use hot docs or document automation tools to make subtle changes. They don't have to be, be big, heavy documents that are used um, uh, in great magnitude. You can have small little applications that are used occasionally, but the fact that they're there support the users and they don't have to think about it. They know that they will get what they need at that time. And I'd just like to share with you um, some, a little story about continual evolution. Uh, shortly after I joined the firm, I was brought a, a precedent document that was about 80 to 100 pages long of independent tables relating to information about countries. And I was asked to automate this to help people to select the countries that they needed um, quickly. So it could be one country, it could be several, or it could be all. And I looked at this Word document and thought, well, yes, we can do the automation in what I would call the traditional way, as the hot docs demonstrations will show you. But then I realized the maintenance, the changes to text, how frequently does this information change? So what impact will it have on me if I'm looking after a firm of applications I don't have the time to just pop in and make an amendment and release it. Um, so I, I moved the information into a data, um, an Excel spreadsheet and created a data source from it and gave the file back to the department. So you maintain the text, you look after it and just let me have the spreadsheet back every time you want to release an update. And that's worked incredibly well um, uh, over the years. 
when we came to migrate to Hotdoc Server, we had to then think about, well, what's been happening over the years? And one of the problems with the um, using the Excel spreadsheet was the time lapses. So um, they may make an amendment and then sit on it and wait for more amendments before sending it through to me. So there would always be a time lag for the information. The information was not always guaranteed to be you know, the latest. So in moving to Hotdoc Server and working again with the Hotdocs team to help us retrieve multiple rows from SQL databases, we moved the Excel spreadsheet data into a SQL database. And then the, um, one of the developers, you know, programmers here, created a content management tool with an, um, an administrator level, so somebody could edit the changes and uh, edit the entries and, or add new entries and make changes. And then that was with a small workflow passed on to an approver who would review the information, click the approve button, and the information was, is now instantly available to the rest of the team throughout the region. So there's a lot that goes into looking at applications and thinking about along the way how does this, how can we work easily, how can we make sure that maintenance or changes get to the workforce quickly, and that's only part of document automation. So um, to finish up now, I would just say I'd, I'd like to leave you with a couple of quotes. One is, um, it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be all singing, all dancing, sparkly, um, sensation, look at me, automation. Whatever makes your workforce work even a little bit easier or frees up a bit more time, then it's a success. And as one of our associates once said, um, you know, I, I just want the, the computer to do the no-brainer simple stuff. I want, I want the fun stuff. I want the legal challenges. Um, but this is this is the beauty about document automation and tools like you know hot docs especially they really help they're so flexible you can build the really big crunchy regulatory application or you can just tickle it with a little bit of light application but essentially for me it's also bringing it into an arena whereby change of branding I've made my life easier too and I've not affected the content. So that's about it from me. I'd be happy to uh, answer any questions that m may have come forward. And thank you for listening. And thank you very much, Terry. It's very interesting. So we've had a few questions coming in. Um, and one of the questions, and you alluded earlier on to uh, perhaps not trying to automate everything in a template, um, in other words, every question, and, and delivering phases. And one of the questions coming in is, how, when, you, when you're given a new template or you've identified a, temp, a document that should be automated, how do you go about, what methodology do you have for, for identifying the, the questions or which parts of that template offer the most benefit? Well, quite often before I've even looked at the document, uh, I'll be talking to the people that sent it to me and to, to ask about how the team are working and at what stage things happen and how much is negotiated either with the client or other parties. So I want to get a feel, feel, feel first for the whole process that's involved. And then I will ask them really to say, if you're sitting at the computer screen, what six questions? would you ask yourself or would you answer? And that will then flavour how I approach the document. So you concentrate on the most important six questions in the first delivery? Uh, and they, can be, they can be fewer. <laughs> you know, six is the maximum. I often find that people will bring me more than six. They will even look stunned like only six. Uh, but it allows this phase development, it allows, allows an agile development phase so that we're getting the use of the automation into the business quicker 
than if we had 30 questions. Because again, against that, we've got to do the testing. And what I've found is generally people don't like the testing. So the more that you can do things in small chunks, the better. People can bring me 30 questions, and then I will say six. But if they're not willing to um, go with me on that, if they're too busy, then I will look at it and, and begin to automate myself. Um, but I'll do it in Word, and I'll just sort of color code to show the impact of the document, because that is an interesting um, analysis. So that they can, um, we can then discuss, and then I can lead them and say, I think you ought to keep to these first questions, and and start the the um, the development that way. And how do you go about getting feedback from from templates once they're in production, or once they're being used? Yeah, it it always makes me smile when you talk about um, templates because I will talk about applications yeah. because of the added benefit that I've brought into them. Um, but that's why, the, from starting from scratch, the biggest feedback you get is during that development phase. And so it's working very closely. So once we've got the however many questions we're going to start with, I'll put those um, into, an in, into the, the dialogue screens and send a link just across to them and say, how does this look on the screen? Do you, does the word you know, the wording of the questions, do they make sense, should they be changed? And so that, because the, the whole um, user interface, the working with the question, is a separate product to actually bringing the content of the template out. So once we've um, settled on the question, then we'll automate, then I'll automate the template and then it's constantly going back and through, um, allowing people to test and give feedback. I am not fast if anybody's critical, because I'm not precious about it. I'm trying to build something that works for them. So very related question coming in is, is a question asking about the most efficient way to test a template. <laughs> Which might be what you described. Yeah, um, what I will do is having uh, identified our, our initial set of questions, I will then ask and um, create an Excel spreadsheet with the questions and then the relevant number of test scenarios. And that depends on the complexity and the types of documents and everything else. There's no complete, um, you know, how many you get. It, it does depend on your template. So I will um, make sure that I create Word documents of those scenarios so that they're approved before I start coding the template. And then during development, I will constantly test my work against those approved, temp um, approved documents. Yeah. And I think that's pretty good because you've then got document comparison tools to kick in and help. And I'm... Right. I'm I was going to say, I'm just minimizing the amount of time that I'm asking the sponsor or the team to spend testing themselves and expecting them to trawl through the documents with a fine tooth comb. I suppose by keeping your phases small, the number of questions, uh, that helps with that testing as well. Oh, undoubtedly. Okay, so we're, we're actually at the end of our half an hour um, for this um, lunchtime uh, webinar. Um, if you do have any further questions, I can see some coming in just now, please do uh, contact marketing at hotdocs.co.uk. Uh, we can organize a demonstration or otherwise answer your questions. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today and a big thank you to Perry, Terry Ponsford. Thank you. <laughs>